Hello everyone, this is Oscar Gauri. Thank you for viewing my video presentation made for Linux Certification Virtual Summit on how to perform various tasks on a sample Red Hat CSA exam system we call Station 1 in the video presentation. In that video, I also mentioned that we had Server 1 with IP 192.168.0.200.24 and Gateway 192.168.0.1 already set up to provide DNS and NTP services an HTTP YUM repo hosting the CentOS 7.0 software and an FTP repo hosting a newer version of the Linux kernel. Moreover, Server 1 also had a combination of open LDAP and NFS services providing authentication and home directory share services for LDAP user 1 user account. These network services were configured on Server 1 to support the implementation of some of the sample Red Hat CSA exam tasks on Station 1. In this video today, I'm going to show you how I configured those network services on Server 1. You can use these steps in this video and the video presentation I made for the summit to practice the sample Red Hat CSA exam scenarios. Again, I'm not going to provide theoretical information associated with the setup. That's beyond the scope of this video. Okay, let's get it started. First of all, I'll show you how I, how I configured the YUM repository on a brand new installation of Server 1 to make the CentOS 7.0 packages available from var www HTML CentOS directory via the HTTP protocol. Here are the instructions I followed. I attach the CentOS 7.0 ISO image to the Server 1 virtual machine. Then on Server 1, I mounted the ISO image on the MNT directory. And I confirmed with the MDF command. And there it is. You can see it. I then created a file in the slash etc slash yum dot repository directory called centos dot repo. Centos repo is the ID for this repo. Comments centos seven dot o software base URL equals file colon slash 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 mnt enable equals one gpg check equals zero the file is created save the file and quit vi now run the yum clean all command to clean the cache memory and then execute yum repo list to load the new repo configuration. And as you can see, 3,538 packages are available from the new repository that we just configured. Now, I'm going to install the HTTP software, yum minus y install HTTPD. software is installed successfully, then I, under the var H, www HTML directory, I created CentOS subdirectory here, and then I edited the fstab file and added an entry for the ISO image for automatic mount on var www HTML slash CentOS directory ISO 9660 is the optical file system type. Read only, no checks. Save the file and quit. Unmount the ISO image from the MNT folder and confirm. And then run the mount minus A command and execute the DF command again to see the new mount point. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I added the HTTP
service to work through the firewall, add service, HTTP, and then reloaded the firewall rules. Then I executed the C system CTL command to enable the HTTP service to auto start at system reboot, and then I started the service, HTTPD. HTTPD service has been successfully started. Then I went back into the repository directory and opened this file in VI and changed the base URL from local file to HTTP protocol. IP address of this server, 192.168.0.200 slash send to us, directory name. Then again, yum, clean, all, and then yum, repo list. Should be able to see the file. And as you can see, the repo has been, is now available from the HTTP server. Next, I built the FTP YUM repository to store a newer version of the Linux kernel at var FTP pub kernel directory. This service was for the tasks to install a newer version of the kernel on station one. I've already downloaded a kernel and it is currently sitting in the downloads directory under root. There are a couple of kernel files. We're gonna use the first one only. Okay, so I installed the HTTP, uh, sorry, I installed the VSFTPD software, yum install minus Y VSFTPD. And then under the var FTP pub directory, I created kernel subdirectory and copied the kernel file from my home downloads directory. To here. After the file has been copied, I applied the SE Linux file context on the kernel on the entire var FTP pub. And then I added the FTP service to the firewall dash dash permanent dash dash add service FTP firewall dash dash CMD dash dash reload to load the new rules. And then system CTL enable VSFTPD service. And then system CTL start VSFTPD software. Okay, and then in the etsy.yum.repos.d directory, I made a copy of the existing repo file as kernel.repo and then open the kernel.repo file for editing change it to kernel repo, send to us kernel software, kernel RPM. Base URL is FTP, IP address the same, and pub kernel. Enabled equals one, GPG check, save the contents, and exit out of the VI editor. <coughs> Now I'm gonna run, I ran the yum repo list command and should be able to see the new repo. No, we don't see it. Um, well, I forgot to run the create repo command. So var FTP pub kernel directory um, create repo repository, 
minus V for verbosity and in the current directory. And the repo has been set up. We should now be able to see yum in the yum repo list output. Okay, so there is one, under the status column, you can see that there is one um, software package available from this repo. Next, I configured the DNS service on server one to support forward and reverse lookups for both server one and station one systems. I installed the, the bind software and bind server software and bind client utilities with the yum command. <coughs> Then I opened the namedy.conf file in the etsy directory and I added the IP address of server one to the listen on directory, 192.168.0.200 semicolon. And the same thing in the allow query directory. These two entries are added. I save the file and I added the forward and reverse zone information uh, to the end of the file. Zone example.com internet fully brace on. Type master, file name for this zone, fd.example.com, allow update, none, and this forward zone entry is added. The other zone was 0.168.192.in.addr.arpa in three braces. Type master file for this zone read.example.com allow updates and then okay so the additions have been made we just wanted to ensure that there are no typos in the zone entries file okay forward zone reverse zone okay the entries look good save the file exit out of the vi editor now i'm gonna i added the the zone uh, uh, um, i created zone configuration files um, fd.example.com and re.example.com under the var name d directory vi fd.example.com and then ttl um, one day maybe okay at in start of authority server one dot example dot com root and the email is example dot com dot and start make sure this is an fqdm today's date 2016 10 
27 and 00, zero serial uh, let's say one hour refresh one hour retry one hour expire one hour minimum TTL close this is statement and then at internet name server server one dot example dot com dot server one internet address record one nine two one six eight zero two hundred station one in a one nine two one six eight dot zero dot one hundred so these are the so so we added name server entry in here and also the server one and station one IP addresses as A records. Save the file and then create re.example.com zone file for the reverse zone. Um, dollar TTL one day at in start of authority server one dot example dot com dot email address root dot example dot com dot start 2016 October 2700 serial one hour refresh one hour retry expire one hour minimum TTL and close this statement now let's add the record for the name server and the and the pointer record at in ns server one dot example dot com dot at in pointer example dot com dot server one a record one nine two one six eight zero dot two hundred station one dot one hundred two hundred in PTR server one dot example dot com dot and is station one save the file and quit VI and then we're gonna check whether the whether there are any syntax errors or any other issues with these three files we have just edited so name d dash check conf to check the etc name d dot conf file no error messages then check the the zone files first the example dot com var name d fd dot example dot com which is for the forward zone everything is okay then name d dash check conf check zone for the reverse zone one six eight dot one nine two dot in dash addr dot arpa var name d r e dot example dot com okay everything is loaded perfectly there is there are no issues now I change the owning group on all the, the files under var name D to name D ch grp name D let's do it on all the files and confirm 
and then we're going to apply the SE Linux file context on these files, the two files that we just created. So restore con, we can simply run with the minus uppercase R to put on all the files under var named D directory. And file wall dash cmd dash dash permanent dash dash add service equals dns and then firewall cmd dash dash reload so the updated rule is added to the firewall and then update the updated the resolver dot configuration file in the etc directory search example.com name server 192.168.0200 save the file and exit out of the vi editor and in the and modify the interface configuration file to ensure that when the interface is is re-enabled it won't override the contents of the resolve.com file. So, peer DNS. Okay, we're gonna have to hit. Okay, um, we're gonna add this directory here, peer. DNS, set it to no. Save the file and apply the configuration to the interface. So nmcli dev disconnect the ENP or simply restart the networking system CTL restart network. And we can do a cat on the resolve.com file to ensure that the information was not overwritten. Then we hit the system CTL, enable name D, which is the bind or DNS service, and system CTL, start name D. To test the functionality of the DNS server, we can use the we could use the NSL, NS lookup command, server one, and see what the output is. Okay, it shows that the server, the NS look, lookup command used is 192.168.0.200, which is the IP of this system, and station one. Same 192.168.0.200, the NS server is used to look up the IP of station one. The next service I configured was the open LDAP service with a user account called LDAP user one. Using TLS certificate called station one cert dot PAM available from HTTP repository under server one slash pub slash search directory. Okay. So I created the user account for LDAP user one, MKDIR, under the slash home slash users directory. User add minus D slash home slash users slash LDAP user one for LDAP user one account. Echo, I set the password to user one, two, three for LDAP user one. So echo user one, two, three pipe password dash dash std in ldap user one. Password is set for the new user account. Then we did the file context for slash home slash users ldap user one to the SE Linux policy database minus add type public content rwt slash home slash user slash ldap user one for all the files. Question mark and this. And 
then restore con minus uppercase rv slash home slash user slash ldef user one to apply the context to restore the context from the se linux policy database and it is done okay um, then i installed the open ldap server software ldap servers software as well as servers software as well as open ldap clients software so open ldap open ldap servers open ldap clients The service name for Open LDAP server is called Slap D, S L A P D. So I'm going to enable this service for auto start, add subsequent system reboots, and start the service now. System CTL, enable Slap D. System CTL start slap T. Service has been successfully started as well. And then the firewall change, firewall CMD dash dash permanent, dash dash add service for LDAP. And firewall CMD dash dash reload. Okay, firewall configuration is done. Now created a separate file for capturing LDAP, LDAP log information. So in the rsyslog.configuration file, we added an entry in the rules section uh, we can add it here. Local four, and we want all LDAP messages to be stored, recorded in the while log LDAP dot log file. We needed to see restart the RSS log service. That's done. The next step was to create. Password for the LDAP administration services. So slap PASSWD, hit the enter key, and enter a password. So I used LDAP123, LDAP123 as a password. And then I Copied the output LDAP add minus Y. I added the two schemas cosine and NIS dash minus uppercase H LDAP I minus F. Okay, I'm gonna cd into the open LDAP directory. LDAP add minus uppercase Y external minus uppercase H LDAP I colon minus F under the schema directory there is a cosine LDAP file. Edit. And there's another one called NIS. So edit both schemas successfully. And then I created the a file to 
to update the HDB database. We are, let's call it HDB dot elder. And I added these entries. OLC database name is dollar two HDB comma CN config. Change type, modify, replace, OLC suffix, OLC suffix, colon, DC equals example, DC equals com, DN, OLC database equals HDB comma CN equals config change type modify replace OLC root DN OLC root DN to CN or administrator administrator name will be admin DC equals example DC equals com let me fix something up here okay. DN equals OLC database equals HDB comma CN equals config change type modify replace OLC root password OLC root PW colon and paste the password that we copied earlier and save the file and exit out of the VI editor. Okay, LDAP modify. Now we're gonna modify the modify the external minus uppercase H LDAP I colon minus F HDB dot LDAP file this file. The changes will be written to the etsy open ldap slab d dot d cn equals config directory. There is a file in there called olc database equals to hdb dot ldiff. And the modifications were successful. Now there is a monitor database that needed to be updated as well. So we're created a file called monitor ldiff, added entry dn olc database equals monitor cn equals config, change type, modify, replace, olc access, OLC access curly braces zero two asterisk by DN dot base equals double code GID number equals zero plus UID number equals zero cn equals peer credential cn equals external cn equals read by dn dot base equals cn equals
cn equals administrator dc example dot dc com fed by asterisk none okay verify the changes and see if there are any typos that you can see no save the file quit pi and write this information to the monitor database oops okay we're gonna open this file again there is something wrong in the file dn equals DN OLC database equals one monitor CN change type modify replace OLC access zero two asterisk by DN dot base. Oops, we're missing something here. Base equal sign. GID number equals zero plus UID number equals zero CN peer Cre credential CN external CN auth read by DN dot base equals CN admin example read by okay Ran the command again and this time it was successful now create generated TLS certificate and private key we use the open SSL command to create a new request x509 type and the output will be sent to the station one cert.pam file under the HC open LDAPS search directory. Which is right in there. So open SSL request new X509 output in the search directory called station one search <coughs> dot pam and key will be stored in the same directory and the name of the file we prefkey prefer key dot pan and number of days the validity for this certificate set to 90 days and dash notes uh, country name no need state or province locality for our purposes we don't need all this information however we need to enter the host name here. So server one dot example dot com. Email address, no need. There is an error message. Oops. Search. This is search directory. Server one dot example dot com. No need for the okay this time it worked perfectly fine okay we're gonna change the ownership on the search file let's cd into search directory there are two files in here ch own ldap both should be owned by the ldap user and owning group ldap as well um for both files and done <coughs> then the private key has read write read read permissions so we don't want other than the owner to be able to view the file content so we said chamod 600 on station one priv key file and confirm now the certificate database need to be updated as well so we're going to create a file called cert.ldiff and dn colon cn 
equals config change change type modify replace olc tls certificate key file olc tls certificate key file colon etc open ldap search station one try key dot pan dn equals cn equals config change type modify replace olc tls certificate file olc tls certificate file colon at c open ldap search station one search dot pan and that's it save the file and exit out of the vi editor and run the ldap modify command with minus y external minus uppercase h ldap uri minus f this file name sir dot ldap and it will update the it updated the cn config database okay so all this information is all set now the we're going to we set up the ldap database now so cd into the var lib ldap directory and copy the db config dot example file from user share open ldap servers directory db to here the file is copied need to change the ownership and owning group to ldap ldap db and this file is should be called db config okay db underscore config let's go one step back Oops. user at c open ldap directory at back to this directory and create a base.ld file to apply some basic configuration information in here. dn equals, dn is dc equals example, dc equals com, dn example, sorry, dc is example. object class top object class domain dn organizational unit people dc equals example dc equals com organizational unit people and object class organizational unit now I'm going to copy the these three lines rather than typing them again colon one two three four five six comma Eight CO nine. Oops. Six comma eight CO eight. Okay, this group group organizational unit. Save the file and exit out of the VI editor and apply these add this database to
cn equals admin comma dc example comma dc com minus f and this file ldif file name base dot ldif password is ldif one two three and the entries are added now we're going to we build the ldev structures which is done and slab test to test out all the configuration config file testing succeeded now we migrated the ldev user one user account to ldev so we need yum minus y install migration tools software package installed successfully and then under the user share migration tools directory is a file called migrate common dot ph needed to modify this there is a default mail domain and default base direct directives that needed to be set to example the values needed to be set to example dot com save the file exit out of the vi editor and migrate the data cat password file and grab for ldap user one and save the output into a file called password dot out and use the migrate password perl script right in that directory to create users dot ldiff file out of this to convert the information in the password dot out file in the ldiff format and it is done now we're going to repeat the same thing for the group ldep user one group account and save the output to the group dot out file and migrate group dot pl command group dot out groups dot ldep done and now ldep add minus xwd cn equals admin comma dc example dc com minus f users dot ldef password is ldep123 done and do the same thing for groups dot ldef file password is ldep123 and the group information and the user information both were converted and added to the ldep database now we're, we ran the ldep search command to search for common name ldep user one domain component example dc equals com and if we see the information for ldep user one that means minus lowercase x that means the ldep account ldep database has been successfully created with ldep user one account user account imported without any issues the next configuration item the next um, network services we configured on server one was nfs shared home directory slash home slash user slash ldap user one for the ldap user account that we just created so yum minus y for confirmation install nfs utils and rpc bind 
both packages. Both are already there. Add firewall permanent dash dash add service NFS firewall dash CMD dash, dash reload firewall change done open the exports file the VI editor and so slash home slash users slash LDAP user one directory exported out to station one in read write mode no root squash let's just put it for now okay contents saved file created system ctl enable nfs.target system ctl System CTL start NFS target. Check the status of NFS dot target and the service is up and running. And the home directory A is now exported. export fs minus avr okay it's exported to station one dot example dot com and the last item was the network time protocol service configuration yum install ntp yes open the ntp dot conf file in the etsy directory Go to the server entries in there, comment them. Oh, we don't need them. And edit our own entry server. 127.127.1.0 fudge. one is stratum. And that's it. Save the file, exit out. System CTL enable. Well, firewall CMD dash dash permanent dash dash add service NTP firewall CMD dash dash reload. And system CTL enable. NTP, NTPD, and system CTL start NTPD service. And that's all for the server side configuration.